Hello, my name is Hannah. I'm the maker and designer behind Herb Garden Knitwear and in this video I'm going to show you all my knits and releases of the year 2023. In the year 2023, I did not um, release as many patterns as I did in the years before. And that uh, was because there are quite a bit of changes happening lately. Um, last year, I um, started a new job and I also found a new apartment and very recently moved, which is lovely. So this is the first recording in a new setup, which you might have noticed. and. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a busy uh, kind of time in the past few months and weeks um, and I have also had a bad flu, but now I'm all better. So um, let's start with uh, this roundup video and I really hope you'll enjoy it. One of the first finished objects of 2023 is a very, very big cardigan that I made and obviously um, when I'm sitting here you cannot see it properly so I will insert some footage of me wearing it so that you can get a good look. So this is a cardigan that I started in 2022 and while I um, enjoyed working on it in the beginning it is it is really really big and it's knit uh, in brioche so it took me quite some time to finish this and this is why um, this is the first finished object of 2023 because in the first weeks of January I was finally able to bind this off. It has a beautiful shawl collar and this shawl collar is uh, worked with short rows so it's a very round collar and this here is uh, the center back. And um, I knit this cardigan holding one strand of um, Pluto Lupi together with uh, silk mohair. I believe um, I used uh, a Fecula Natilia for um, this cardigan. And it has beautiful double knit edges all around, both on the side pieces in the front and also on the bottom edge, on the shawl collar as well, and also uh, the cuffs of the sleeves are also double knit, which I really enjoy. And uh, this is a very, very big project. I also um, did a double knit um, belt to close this cardigan as it is um, supposed to be an open cardigan without buttons or anything but sometimes I would like to um, close it in the front so I made this little belt for it and um, I'm really really happy with this cardigan this is uh, not something I have uh, planned to release so far I'm not sure if I ever will um, I recently decided that it's not possible for me to, to make a pattern for everything that I knit because um, I'm, I'm quite a fast knitter but I'm not a fast pattern writer. Maybe I will uh, get into my plans for 2024 at the end of this video or I make a separate one depending on how long this will get. But um, yeah, so far there are no plans to release this one but I really like it and it's really cozy and very warm. And uh, as um, Plutolopi is a non-spun yarn, this cardigan is very, very light and very warm at the same time. And it's especially light if you consider how, how long it is. So um, that is really, really lovely about this cardigan. So finished object number one. So the next thing I have finished in 2023 is uh, also a cardigan. And this is a design by um, Alonga Vegana and it's 
the Rosa cardigan, which is um, a raglan, top-down raglan kind of cardigan with a v-neck and uh, a lovely button band. And it's um, especially beautiful as these raglan increases have these lovely eyelet details, both in the front and in the back. And this is the one thing that I have knit in 2023 that was not my own design. So usually I venture out and choose one pattern of a different designer a year. That is because um, even where there are so, so many lovely designs and I have an amazingly long to knit list of things that I would love to knit from other people, but I usually don't have a lot of time to knit other people's designs. So um, in the past years, I have chosen one design per year and this is the one that I chose. And I'm really happy with it. It's lovely. I used one strand of um, Hold Super Soft together with this strand of mohair. And uh, it's created a beautiful fabric that I really enjoy. And uh, once again, this is very light and very warm. The next item that I finished in 2023 is one of my own designs. It's called uh, the chain mill slipover. And I chose this name because I feel like this is um, like a tiny piece of, of armor shielding, shielding me from the cold. And uh, it has worked in, in seat stitch mainly. It has um, these beautiful welds along the neckline and uh, a very dense ribbing both on the bottom edge and on the neckline. And while this um, might look like a very simple and easy knit, it's um, more of an advanced piece um, because uh, the neckline um, is a little bit challenging as the part with the welds here is a different stitch count as the ribbing and so you have to knit those um, sections separately and then sew on um, the neckline. That was um, something that I did because I really wanted the ribbing on the neck match the ribbing here at the bottom edge. This pattern um, is available on Ravelry it comes in 18 sizes, so it's very size inclusive. And um, I uh, really love to wear this over um, all of my dresses. So when I'm wearing it with um, these pants, you can see uh, it appears to be a little short. That's because I knit it in a way that um, the bottom edge exactly hits my, my natural waist. So when I'm wearing dresses, then um, it looks absolutely perfect. I've also seen um, people wear it with um, blouses underneath or shirts, um, and that also looks very, very great. This um, slipover is worked with um, Rauma Finul, and uh, the parts up to, up to and including the welds are worked with one strand and the um, seat stitch here is worked with uh, two strands. So this is very very warm and uh, I think it's um, lovely to wear uh, in winter paired with a cardigan so that you get extra warmth without having too much bulk um, on your sleeves. Then uh, in 2023 I ventured out and uh, discovered sock knitting for the first time. And uh, I absolutely loved it. I was hooked immediately and uh, I really fell in love with the tiny nine inch circular needles. I'm not a big fan of DPN, so I really, really loved these nine inch circulars. And once uh, I got started with sock knitting, I couldn't stop. So <laughs> I have knit plenty of socks uh, the past year. And uh, I don't all have all of them with me here because um, they, there are so many, but I will show you the most important ones. Um, first, I knit um, a very simple 
um, pair of ripped socks, which were my absolute um, first pair that I ever finished. And I have worn them a lot, so I will insert a picture of when they were new here because <laughs> they, they are very worn out already because I have worn them for months and months. Um, yes, but after that I um, ventured out and uh, decided to knit up uh, a sock pattern and uh, I came up with these cute little shorty socks which are called the Seaborn socks because they have the same beautiful shell pattern here as um, my Seaborn tee has, a pattern that I have released in the past. And they also have the um, jockless stripes for which you can find um, a tutorial on my channel as well. So these are very very quick and fun socks um, and I really love making them and therefore I have made countless of versions. So this is the, the original version but I have also made like a more autumnal version with um, a variegated yarn. I have made uh, monochrome versions with a um, little longer um, leg and I have made uh, some for a lot of friends and for my sister and for my mom and I don't have all of them with me here but um, there were plenty of versions of the socks that I made throughout uh, 2023. This pattern uh, is also available on Ravelry in several sizes, I believe in, in four or five sizes, so you can make um, socks for all of your family members if you want to. Then uh, it was about, I'm not quite sure, early summer, I believe, of uh, 2023, and I decided to um, knit another summer tea because I really love them as they are so um, quick to make and I made this lovely little tea with um, this lovely textured ridges um, within the stockinette. It is called Tallulla tea and this pattern is currently in the test knitting phase and I have already seen so many beautiful finished Tallulah teas and I'm very excited for this tea to be ready for release. The test is still running till um, March 15th and um, I will um, make the plan the release afterwards so I will have um, probably a week or, or two after that. but. Maybe in, in early April or something like that, this pattern will be released. It is uh, knit from uh, Sandnes Line, which is a lovely blend of um, viscose, cotton and um, linen. And it's one of my absolute favorite uh, summer yarns. It is very, very drapey and it feels super soft to the skin. And I really like um, how it keeps you warm uh, if you need it, if you need to be warm, or how it keeps you cool um, in the middle of summer. So I use this both at, as um, a layering piece, but also I wear this like in the very hot summer month. Um, and it's, it's very airy and lovely. And I've already worn this quite a bit last summer. Then. Uh, Around the same time, I started on a new sweater. This uh, has not been named yet, but I am planning to release this one too, but I still need to write up the pattern. So this is the first sample that I made. It is um, a sweater with a very high neckline and it has these lovely eyelets around the neck um, that I really love. Um, the eyelets are worked uh, with uh, a cable technique and um, yarn overs and um, I had uh, a bit of trouble figuring out how to mirror the same eyelets on the cuff of the sleeves because um, of the direction uh, they were knit in. So um, this sweater is cast on 
uh, at the neckline and then worked top down. So when I worked uh, the neckline, the eyelets at the neckline, I worked the ribbing first and then the eyelets and then uh, transi transitioned into stockinette. While when I uh, reached the cuff, then I um, was working stockinette and then had to do the eyelets and then the ribbing while also um, decreasing here for the rib, whereas um, at the neckline I um, increased for the yoke. So um, I managed to find uh, a way to mirror these eyelets so that they are very similar even though they are knit completely differently. And this first sample I worked um, holding two strands together. The one was um, Drops Flora and the other one was the Drops Kitzel, the, the Drops Mohair. And um, I really love this fabric that it creates. It's both very um, soft and drapey. But um, I also wanted to try um, a different yarn because I wanted to make a second sample as I felt that the sleeves in this version were not puffy enough for what I was going for. So when I bound off that sample, I um, cast on the same sweater again and knit a second sample. And this time I used um, two strands of um, Isaiah Alpaca 2 held together in the same colorway. And uh, this is um, a yarn that is 50% alpaca and 50% wool. And the general idea of the sweater is still the same, but I modified the sleeves a little bit so that they have a little more puffiness. And with this version, I'm very, very happy. I'm super happy with how the sweater turned out. I have worn the first sample, but not the second sample yet, as I still need to take uh, pictures of it for the pattern. But uh, I, um, of course, did a fit check and uh, I really absolutely love the sweater. It is so cozy. I really love the extra long and warm sleeves and the wool and apaca fabric is a, an absolute dream. And I'm not sure if the camera is picking this up okay, but the yarn has the most beautiful depth to it. It is mainly a dark blue, but if you look close, it also has hints of teal and purple in it, and it's a, an absolutely stunning yarn. The colorway is called Midnight, and I absolutely love it. And I think this design and um, the yarn work perfectly together. It's an absolute perfect match. So I'm very excited to write up this uh, pattern and um, get it to you, hopefully within this year. When I uh, was done with that sample, I um, had a little bit of yarn left over and so I quickly made uh, this lovely headband. It's called the Raspberry Headband. It's um, one of the... Um, it's one of the very first patterns that I ever um, released. And uh, to me, this is one of the knits that I go back to again and again, because this is super quick. I can knit one of these in an evening if I need to. And they are lovely gifts because they are such um, classic headbands. And um, they can be adjusted to um, any uh, head size. You can make them for uh, children as well as uh, for adults and um, the length can be as long as you like. So you cast on in the center of the back and then work in garter until you make this lovely twist here and then you work the other half and uh, join the headband in the center of the back. And I have um, written down in the pattern a technique that makes the join almost invisible. So um, in, on the inside you can see it pretty well, but from the outside um, it's not very easy to spot. And uh, for this, um, 
This one I used the leftover yarn. This is um, two strands of Drops Flora held together. And the exciting thing about this headband is that you can basically knit it at any gauge. You can just simply um, adjust the stitch count that you have and then the technique to make the twist here it will always be the same. So this is a pattern that I highly, highly recommend because it's very quick, very fun and you can make it really for everyone with every yarn that you have at home. The next uh, sweater that I made um, is also uh, a circular yoke, um, top-down circular yoke sweater, but this one has um, a lovely colorwork yoke and um, in between the colorwork sections um, there are also very beautiful textured stitches that mimic um, cables a little bit but are much easier to work. And uh, this is one of the sweaters that I love and wear the most. Um, it has short row shaping in the neck and um, is worked with uh, two strands of um, Hold Super Soft held together. The colorway is called Space and it's this lovely dark teal kind of color. This is a yarn that um, is named a little bit misleading when you first get it. It's definitely not super soft. It has a lot of spinning oil in it and uh, this means while you knit it, it sometimes feels a little bit harsh. But as soon as you wash it, it blooms beautifully. It gets um, absolutely gorgeous and uh, much softer with wear and washing. So I have worn this um, since uh, I made it quite a bit and um, it gets softer and softer with every wear. And this is uh, a yarn that I really love for colorwork spiders like this, which you will maybe see if I show you the next uh, finished object. This is my uh, Hirait sweater. This is a design that I have published before 2023, but um, in 2023, the wonderful end of um, My North Knit Corner hosted uh, a knit along for the Herb Garden Knitwear Patterns. And I uh, joined this knit along and cast on a second sample for my Hero sweater. And this is the one that I made. And uh, it's also um, holds super soft held double. The darker color is uh, called Indigo and the lighter color is called uh, Glacier. And once again, I held uh, two strands together and got this absolutely gorgeous blue Hirad sweater. And to be honest, I might even like this sample a little more than my original sample just because um, of the colors. I think uh, these shades of blue uh, suit me a little better. And I also made this one a little shorter as I'm wearing usually a lot of skirts and um, dresses and I really like uh, my sweaters to be a little shorter. So this uh, is definitely also one of my absolute favorite makes of 2023 and uh, I'm not done with project and whole super soft. When we got to the end of the year I decided that I wanted to knit myself a Christmas sweater but I usually do not want my sweaters to only fit into December or Christmas season so I try to find um, a design that uh, can, uh, can be worn all year round but also like it's a little bit festive um, and this is what I came up with. This um, is once again a top-down circular yoke knit uh, in whole super soft held double and uh, I, I really love this because the stitch pattern that is um, at the neckline um, is the same that uh, is also on the sleeves and I think this um, looks very classic and um, I can imagine wearing this for, for many years to come and um, I have already worn this <laughs> almost uh, all Christmas days and uh, in January a lot as well and I'm very happy um, with how this turned out. I have not yet um, decided if I want to release that one 
or if this is going to be just a sweater for myself but of course I will keep you updated and should I decide to release it it will probably be around um, the end of the year because you know it is a little bit of fest uh, festive sweater. In the fall of 2023 I decided to host uh, a knit along myself. I have done this in the past as well. This is um, this was in 2023 the second annual Herb Garden Knitwear Shawl knit along and I have cast on a second Ardent Autumn Shawl. I have um, released this pattern the year before I believe and it is knit of yarn that I absolutely love but sadly is discontinued. This was um, a small German brand called Rain Cloud and Sage and the yarn um, was called Origin. And um, it is a lovely rustic yarn that sadly is no longer available. But I had this um, in my stash and so I decided to just knit a second shawl. The first one that I made was um, a bright, deep, not, not bright, um, um, a saturated orange. And this is a lovely green, though this color always on camera appears to be more grayish. Um, in real life, it's it's much a much deeper green. Um, the color um, was called um, Moor, I believe. And this um, shawl has um, a, an easy to work uh, cable stitch and um, some beautiful eyelets and a very wide ribbing, which I love a lot. It's knit from the top down, so you cast on in the center of the back and then um, increase on both sides and, the, and in the center so that you get this beautiful triangle. And um, I decided to um, do the, de the, the increases in a way that um, you get a lovely tri triangular shape where the the wings are a little bit longer than the center, which I think is um, much easier to wear and uh, looks very classic. And then uh, just before Christmas, I decided that I wanted to cast on another pair of socks. And this was the first time that I um, worked with self-patterning uh, sock yarn because I wanted something um, very mindless and easy for the Christmas day. So I knit a simple stockinette sock with this lovely pattern and I did manage to um, match up both socks so that, I, so that they are perfect twins. And for this um, sock I also learned a new technique which is a shadow wrap heel. The other socks that I um, have worked earlier this year were all heel flap and gusset constructions and uh, this shadow wrap heel was new to me and um, I really enjoyed learning it. And so I made some Christmas socks for myself. This was no pattern, uh, I just free freestyled these socks. And this was also my very last finished object for 2023. So what are my plans for 2024? It is already February, so I'm uh, a little bit late with my plans for this year, but um, I have thought about this for a lot uh, in the past few weeks as they were very busy and I really wanted to um, have something fun to think about. And uh, I don't have like um, very specific plans like make nines or something like that. I um, more think of um, what type of items I like to make and how I can um, use my stash. Um, for example, I would um, like to make more socks, of course, because I enjoy them very, very much still. And uh, I also um, I also decided that I want to um, make some more cardigans. Last year I um, also cast on a Tallulah cardigan, which is a cardigan in the same stitch pattern as this um, Tallulah tee. But um, 
I haven't worked on it for quite some time and I really need to come back to it and uh, decide if um, I want to finish it or if I want to um, rip back and make a new attempt. I'm not, I'm not, I haven't decided yet. Um, but uh, aside from the Tallulah cardigan, I really um, want to focus on cardigans a little more because I wear a lot of dresses and skirts and I really like um, to be able to just throw over a little cardigan and I really love layering. So I, I, I used to wear cardigans a lot, but I tend to really enjoy uh, knitting these top-down circular yoke sweaters. So I might consider um, sticking one of the sweaters, I'm not sure. Um, and I also um, noticed in the past uh, few weeks where I was really busy due to the move and being sick and um, last summer due to the new job that I got that I really fo want to focus on my knitting bringing me joy. Um, as uh, a knitwear designer there are a lot of tasks to do um, besides the knitting. There's so much admin work and um, I have to keep my website running, I have to write the patterns, I have to grade the patterns, I have to organize test knits and when life gets busy I notice that um, all this designing work does feel like work and not like a fun hobby and it should be like something that I do on the side as that is not um, something that provides a living for me. I work as a software developer during the day. This is um, how I earn a living and uh, the designing is just something that I do in my free time. So I definitely need to focus on it being fun again because in the last few weeks it really felt like an obligation and it really shouldn't. So um, as I mentioned before, in past episodes, I usually ever only knit one pattern of a different designer, even though uh, many, many designs I would absolutely love to make, just because of, of time management. I, I really um, hadn't, or I, let's say it in a different way, I, I really want to try to make more time for the things that I love, and if writing the patterns is not the right thing for that moment, then I try to not force myself and maybe just cast on something for me. The issue is, I guess, that um, as I am pretty fast knitter, I can finish many projects, but I cannot write up the patterns as quickly as I finish knitting them. So um, what has happened a little bit, as you might have seen with the items that I've shown you today, that I have more finished items that could be written up into patterns, but I cannot finish all that patterns, all these patterns at, at a realistic timeline in the next couple of weeks. It would take me months to do that. And I really want to take the pressure of myself that everything that I knit and that I show either here or on social media will become a pattern. Um, in the past that is often, not always, but often been the case, but this is also a change for the upcoming, upcoming year. I noticed that as my knitting pace is so much quicker than my pattern writing pace that um, I, I cannot publish everything that I make and therefore I might have some items that I dreamt up myself but will never publish and maybe I will also have a few more items that I knit from other people's patterns just because it will give me a break from having um, having another, another item that um, could, should maybe be released just you know, just for fun. So these are things that I'm thinking about lately. And um, I also think a lot about uh, the colors that I want to use because um, this first sample, for example, of this yet unnamed sweater 
Um, I love the, the fabric, absolutely. It's so beautiful. But I felt like this is a color that does not suit me very well. It makes me look a little bit yellowish and a and little bit unwell. While the dark blue, I think, looks quite a bit better. I'm not sure if this comes uh, through um, on camera. Maybe this is not easy to see on camera. I'm not entirely sure. Please, you can always uh, give me your opinion in the, in the comments, but um, I want to try and focus um, on making knits in colors that I will really enjoy wearing because I feel comfortable wearing these colors. Uh, and to be honest, that um, is a little bit difficult to combine with the goal of using my stash because um, I have bought yarn in the past that I like because I, I absolutely love this color. It's just um, a color that I feel does not suit me very well. And I'm also a lot uh, in love with all these rustic orange colors. And once again, I feel like it does not um, give it justice uh, on, on camera, but I feel this is a color that does not really do me any good. And so I have a lot of yarn in my stash um, where I absolutely love the colors, but I feel like they are not very perfect for me to wear. So um, yeah, that, that, is, that is a challenge because I, um, because um, as a, a small business, I am allowed to include yarns that I use for herb garden knitwear patterns in um, my text declaration. That does not mean that I um, don't have to pay for yarn. I do, but I get some of the, the, how do you say it in English? Like the, is it the VAT, VAT? I don't, I'm not sure how you say it. Like I, if I pay yarn, I pay that too. And I get a little bit back of that. But um, if I have once, um, put yarn in my text declaration, I cannot use it for any other purposes than for her garden knitwear. So I would not be able to just make any other designer's pattern and gift it to someone because this is um, technically yarn that belongs to her garden knitwear and not to me personally. So um, that is also a challenge where I have, um, I want to be really conscious about in the future what I buy and um, what I think I can use. Maybe if you are a designer and uh, maybe have the same uh, challenging tax um, regulations as we have here in Germany, then um, please let me know how you go about this. If you buy a yarn and include it into your business and then later decide that uh, it either does not work for the item that you um, wanted to make of it or if you decide that um, the color is not longer something that you are in love with. How do you go about this? I would love to know that because um, I find it very difficult to, to manage all that. And recently, um, uh, when I moved, I also um, got to pack up all my yarn and unpack it. And that's when you realize how much yarn you really have. And uh, this is why I do want to focus on knitting from stash this year. Not, um, it's not like a ban or something very strict. I don't want to be strict about any of this because I want it to be joyful, but um, I would be really happy when um, at the end of the year I would have um, like reduced my stash a little bit. Like if, um, com if I <laughs> sum up all the grams or the yards or meters or whatever that I have uh, right now, and um, sum it up uh, at the end of the year again, then I would like it to have become a little less. That does not mean that I'm not allowed to buy something or that um, I have to only use the sash yarn, but I would like to um, like for it to become a little smaller. And uh, yeah, that's, this uh, are my thoughts for 2024 so far. 
Let me think if I have forgotten to mention anything. No, I guess that's it. I, I, I will try to make more cardigans, I will knit more socks and I will try to um, consciously um, buy and use my stash yarn and find beautiful projects that I will, will love to make from that yarn that I have. I would love to hear your knitting plans for this year if you're willing to share. Maybe let me know um, what designs you want to make or which designers you have recently discovered. And um, I hope to be more active in the upcoming weeks and months, basically all over the year. I hope that I can get back into things like uh, I was um, in the years before. I really hope to, to find the time and um, at the same time make it all um, fun again for me. So um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that uh, you spent your time with me and I hope the next video that you will see will be uh, a regular the day podcast where I will keep you up to date on what I'm working on right now and um, just chat about what's going on. So um, have a lovely day wherever you are or a lovely evening and I will see you next time. Bye.